This is your butt. This is your butt on silicone injections. This is your butt on silicone injections gone horribly wrong. So this is your butt on an operating room table getting that silicone removed. And this is Ms. Sophie Oak, who actually had to live this embarrassing nightmare. A part of me thought, you know, what if something goes wrong, of course. But then again, I seen my friend do it and she was perfectly fine. And I thought I was untouchable and I thought, you know, nothing could happen to me. But I was wrong. Ms. Oak got the silicone shots on the cheap from someone claiming to be a licensed medical doctor in the state of Florida. But she immediately felt nasty side effects. Um, I felt like I was going to pass out. Um, my heart started to race, like, really, really fast. Uh, I honestly thought I was going to die. The most dreadful complication is uh, ones that happen right away, where some of the material ends up in the veins and they go to the lungs, causing a pulmonary embolus. It is my opinion, and the opinion of the pulmonary doctor who's treating the patient here, that her symptoms and story is consistent with a small amount of silicone embolization. CAT scans revealed significant changes in her lungs. Her doctors recommended multiple surgeries to remove the silicone, to give her immune system a chance to fight off infections. But surgical techniques can have complications of their own. One of the more commonly performed methods in this country for silicone extraction involves liposuction with a concomitant use of either hot or cold lasers. It is my opinion and Dr. Slobodianik's opinion that liposuction will harm patients. A hot laser will cause the silicone to break and then it hydrodissects and it spreads. A common complaint that most women who've had silicone injections have is the silicone is spreading down their legs, down their feet, up their back to their groins. Our technique does not involve spreading the silicone. We're doing this in a staged manner where the first operation is going to allow us to debulk and reduce the foreign body burden and then allowing us to take advantage of the resources that we have in this country and at this hospital, at Lenox Hill Hospital, and use a special device that will suck out the liquid silicone and any bacteria that may be in there while allowing us a second opportunity in approximately three days to go back in, remove any more foreign body, and then perform a buttock lift, which will hopefully give a cosmetically acceptable result. Dr. Mir considers buttock enhancement a byproduct of popular culture. He blames celebrities for promoting unnaturally fuller backsides and unscrupulous so-called doctors for performing the procedures. If you're gonna get plastic surgery, do it the right way, you know, pay the money to do it. Don't look for an easy way out. You know, if it's going to cost you $10,000 to, to get the surgery that you want, then pay that. If it's, you know, if it's something like $2,000 or $1,000, you're going to get what you pay for. So, and always look for uh, a license. That sounds like the voice of personal experience. And for Live Science, I'm Dave Brody.